Welcome back to Learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to create a temperature scale. There are always many ways to do it, but one way is this one. I've got the snapping enabled, I've got also the snapping for rotation center and the snap to paths active. So make sure you start here as well. Then we'll use the ellipse tool or control to create a circle. I press ctrl D to copy it and I give it a different fill and then I hold shift and control to size it down. Let me select both, I press ctrl A, then path and difference. So that's how we get this donut. I press ctrl R to have the rulers blended in and I drag these guides to the center position. Now use the bezier tool, go from the center upwards, snapping helps. If you want to go from bottom to top directly, it's a little bit harder to find a snapping position, so it's a good idea to start from the center and then use the notes tool for control when you drag the bottom node towards the other position of the circle. Let me make that red so that you can see properly. So we've got this line on top. You can make it thicker and thinner to have the gaps bigger. I'll show you this afterwards. But make sure it's selected and go to object transform. We need to rotate menu right here. And the angle, in this case, I use 360 divided by 22, and that gives us exactly 0 to 100 in uh, 10 degree increments for half of the circle. And now I press Ctrl D and I apply the rotation until I've got this shape. Now select it all, go to path, and use combine. Let me create a rectangle, I put it to the bottom, select it all, Ctrl A, then path and division. Now we can delete the parts that we don't need, just like this. And now you can see these gaps right here, so it's basically a white line, but it's in fact transparent. So you can select it all, and I go to path and use combine, and it would be gone. But if you wanna have like black separators, just copy this one. So I press Ctrl Z to return, then I press Ctrl D, and then I use combine. So I've got one where I've got these white transparent lines, and I've got one where I don't. Let me put this one to the left hand side. I'll select the other one and now I'll apply the gradient. So use the gradient tool, make sure it's added as a linear gradient and it should be added to the fill. Start on the left and then drag it to the right. Now we'll have to change the colors. Go to object, fill in stroke. And maybe I should disable the snapping for now. So select these nodes with a simple left click and then I'll use the color wheel up here. Make sure the opacity is 100 for both. And you want to have green and red. And in the center we want to have yellow. So hover over your gradient line and then double click on it. That creates a new node. You can select it now with a left click and make it yellow. And now it's just about repositioning these three nodes that we've got. And the gradient line doesn't necessarily have to be on the object itself, so you can drag it, for example, further to the right. In this case, it makes sense. And then reposition all of these nodes. And I think this is a good result. We can use that. And once again, you can still see these white separators in the background. Let me create a rectangle for the background and you can see that much more clearly. So it's transparent. If I change the color, these separators have a different color as well. 
and this is where we can use the other element. Just put it on top, select them all, object, align and distribute. So now they're exactly in the same position. I select the top one and put it to the bottom. And now we've got black separators. So depending on how thick you make these lines in the beginning, the bigger these separators will be. Now let me select this and I put it a little bit to the left hand side. So now it's in center again. Now we can take care of the numbers. Let me enable the snapping again. I use the Bezier tool and I use my guide to find this position. I'll make it 50 right here. I size it up and down holding shift and control and it snaps to this line that I've created. I don't need the line anymore now, I'll delete it. Select the number then click on it again and you will find this plus sign. This is the rotation center and you can drag it down to the center position of the circle. And now we'll use the transform menu again to rotate it. We've got our angle already. So just press Ctrl D and make sure that the number is actually selected. So Ctrl D and then apply the rotation. Flip it to the other direction. And now we've got a scale from 0 to 100. We only have to change the numbers with the type tool. You can press G for that or select it right here. The number 0 and 100, we may have to reposition that a little bit. Reposition it by double clicking on it, you've got the plus sign. Make sure that it's in center and then you can just rotate it a little bit like this. If you want to change the colors, just flip it right here in the top menu, so select it. And now you've got the red part on the right hand side and the green on the left. Don't just select it like this, that may cause issues instead. You can see right here it doesn't pick the black part, instead press Ctrl A. Now you can be sure that you've got it all selected and then press Ctrl G and you can export this element now. And this is how you can create a temperature scale in Inkscape. I hope this video was helpful, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.